class, congratulations on finishing lesson number two. So you've gotten through two lessons so far of the textbook, and we have moved on to lesson number three. So we're moving quickly through the textbook here, so that's very good. Um, considering how much time we've got left, we've got to keep on moving to make sure uh, you learn. So hopefully you've been able to apply some of the stuff you've been learning already. I know I've heard from some of you that you have, and so that's very good to hear. So we're going to be learning some more things today about publisher for exercise number 17. The specific things we're going to be talking about today is of course dealing with the font. You've already worked with it so I'm not really going to cover it as much in the video. You know most of the font tools are up here so I'll draw a text box and put um, some words in there so you can see it. But of course I mean, all of it's, well, it's here on the home tab but you do have a lot more options now with publisher and that's a nice thing um, for you. So there's a lot of different things you can do here with it. There's also the drawing tools as well for the specific object, the text box itself. So a lot of different things there. Um, some specific things though that I want to focus on is don't forget that if you want to use different colors for your font that you can click on the down arrow and of course you have these different scheme colors but you can click on the more colors button right here and this box will come up with different options here that you can choose and click on or you can click on custom so uh, there's a lot of different things you can choose and just if you need a very specific color um, there's Pantone which gives you more options as well um, if you need it so you'll use it a little bit in the exercises um, it's not necessarily something you're going to use a whole lot or often um, but it's definitely very good to, for you to know so I have my different options there but what I want to specifically focus on and talk about today is changing character spacing now some of you may know what that means, some of you don't, so let's talk about character spacing. Um, it controls, uh, and is, or excuse me, it's controlled and accessible from the character spacing dialog box. Where you do you find that? Well, it's right over here. This A, V, you can see how the letters are together. I click on it and this controls my character spacing. Now I need to select the text first before I do it. I'm going to make it bigger so you can actually see how it affects it. And I click on it. I can hover over it and it makes it very different. So you can see the letters are very tight, very close together, tight, not as much, but closer, normal, loose, and then of course very loose. So it just depends on what you want. If you need to get more specific, you can click on more spacing and it brings up the character spacing dialog box. Now some things we need to talk about. Uh, first off is scaling. Scaling sets the width of selected characters to more or less than the default. So the default of course is 100% that's what it's at so whatever you set the font size to it's gonna stick with that when you're at a hundred percent but maybe you want to make it bigger or smaller um, for instance so for example if you selected a capital A and then set it scaling to 200 it would be twice as wide as normal but the same height so when it talks about scaling it's going and pushing it out here like this in the picture so uh, scaling can be very useful there also another thing we're going to talk about is tracking so you can see here it says use this option to adjust the spacing for a highlighted block of text like we have right now. So I have that selected. So I can click normal, very tight, and do that. And it shows me the preview as well there. So it controls it. And then kerning. So kerning is a little bit different. Kerning controls fine tuning. Uh, or kerning is the fine tuning of the spacing between certain characters based on the shapes. So, for example, when a capital V and a capital A appear next to each other, and you can see it in this picture of the button, uh, the spacing between them can be decreased without letters running into each other because of the shape of the letters. So, it'll just based upon which specific letters that you're using. So, tracking right here is affecting individual characters you know what you have highlighted where um, kerning is affecting the space between the characters if that makes sense so um, automatic pair kerning is turned on by default you can see this on page 85 it automatically kerns text whenever the font size is 14 point and above or whatever you size you specify so um, and character spacing tools are available in different spots um, throughout my uh, Microsoft Publisher um, but this is probably the easiest way to find it is either here on the text box tools um, tab or 
on the home tab it's there as well and you can select one character you can select um, multiple uh, you can select all of it it just depends on what you want to do with um, the specific uh, words you have so um, that's character spacing we're going to be using that throughout the exercise here and then also something new is using a drop cap now a drop cap is a large first letter in a paragraph so like you often see in a book maybe in a textbook maybe in your bible you've seen this um, you have that gigantic first letter and the way you do that you select the text you want to apply to maybe that first specific word um, I'll just select all the text and then I need to click on my text box tools format tab so right over here and then go over here to the right and you can see drop cap is one of my options I click on it and I have different types to choose from so this is comic sans font um, this is uh, more of a cursive looking one I can do one where it does two um, anything like that so I'm gonna go with this one right here um, but you have a lot of different options for it so if you want to get rid of it after you add it all you do is just select the text again click drop cap and then um, you can do custom and try to change and get rid of it I would recommend if you just want to get rid of it just undo would be your easiest way to do it so um, there's a lot of different things you can do with the drop cap there in the more or excuse me custom drop cap I have a lot of different options so I can create one of my own in what it's going to do is it's going to use the current font font style font color that you have or you can uncheck the box and you have the choice of making it different so that'll be very useful a little bit later on so all right those are the different skills that we're going to be using in the exercise so let's get started with the exercise so open up the other video uh, and you'll start completing exercise 17 the first part and then of course on your own